What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. I think the question I am asked most often is about how I resaw boards, which is why? Admittedly, I'm a little taken back by the question because it doesn't really matter too much as long as we find the way that we want to do it. As woodworkers, our entire purpose is to take big boards and then cut them smaller and then maybe take those small pieces and reassemble them into something bigger. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I resaw boards and maybe that will answer that question of why I do it the way I do it. Quickly, if you don't know what resawing is, it's staying the board on its edge and then cutting down the board's length. The two most common reasons why you would do this is to make book matched panels, as in whenever you cut a board in half, you splay it open and now you have grain that mirrors each other, or you simply do it so you can get thinner boards or cut veneer. The bandsaw is the go-to for doing resaw work. And that's because, well, we're told that it is. A bandsaw is fantastic. You can cut some ultra thin boards. It really opens up a whole lot of possibilities for your designs. But when it comes to resawing, let me show you what I do and why I don't necessarily start here. Unless I'm resawing some small pieces, I'll probably do it over the table saw before I ever go to the bandsaw. I have a jig that goes over my table saw fence, and this gives me a tall surface area so my work piece is stable. I set the thickness for the boards I need by measuring from the blade to the fence. And since the table saw blade is rigid, I don't have to worry about any sort of blade drift. Next, I set the blade height to just under half the width of the board. I'll tell you why in a minute. I put my board up against the fence, then I clamp in a feather board, and that pushes that board really tight to the fence and keeps it secure. Then I make my first cut by pushing the board all the way through the blade, and I turn the saw off, take the board, flip it over on its other edge, and then do it again. In total, we're literally dealing with seconds to cut both sides of a board, and I'm just left with that little bitty strip in between. So then I go over to the bandsaw and can very easily and quickly just buzz that part off. Now, depending on the width of the board, you could resaw completely using the table saw, but it's not the safest practice. Because if you don't leave that little strip and you cut all the way through, then you hope that board's gonna fall off to the side. If it falls towards the blade, it hits the blade, it comes up, it rips your face off. And well, I have an aversion to face ripping. So instead, I'll just leave that little strip in the middle, go to the bandsaw, quickly buzz it off, just takes a second or two, then be done with it. I showed you how I do it. Now let's talk about why I do it this way. Well, we'll go over the pros and cons. Now, just a quick disclaimer. My pros and cons list may not be the same as yours. There are some folks out there that seem to confuse preference and opinion versus fact. So just because it's something that's a pro and con on my list doesn't mean it's the same for you. Speed. Holy crap, resawing on a bandsaw is slow. Very slow, especially compared to a table saw. Now, obviously I could just push my workpiece harder against the blade to try to cut it faster, but I'm not really comfortable doing that. And also that could lead to blade drift, which means a poor quality cut. Just the sheer amount of time it takes to resaw a wide board on a bandsaw, it's just too much for me because I'm usually under a time crunch, which means I got to get my pieces cut and then move on to the next stage. And I just don't have a lot of time to sit there and wait for that thing to get all the way through. Another factor when it comes to speed that we got to talk about is changing out the blade. It is way faster to change a table saw blade than a bandsaw blade. You typically want to use a wide blade for resawing because it gives you a straighter cut. It also has less teeth per inch. That means that you can remove that sawdust out, get a cleaner cut without it overheating. If I'm using a bandsaw, it's usually to make curves, not straight cuts. So that means I'm going to take the wide blade out of the bandsaw to put in a thin blade, make my curves, take it back out, put a wider blade in there, do the resawing and back and forth again. Well, frankly, I ain't got time for that. Accuracy. If I need to cut a 1 8 inch wide board, well, my table saw, I just simply slide my fence over, measure 1 8 of an inch between my fence and the blade, go to town. Not so on the bandsaw. I'm probably going to get some degree of blade drift. Now, it may not be a ton, but it's probably going to be there. And I'm not alone at this. This is insanely common for woodworkers. Actually, it's pretty rare if you have somebody who just never gets blade drift at all. Now, there are some vocal people out there that swear they could cut 100 boards on their bandsaw and never once get blade drift. Okay. I get blade drift. I've done the things. I've done the maintenance. I've watched this guy's video. I've read that person's article. I've done it. I still get a little bit of drift. It happens. And because I do, that means that my boards are probably not going to be exactly to the measurement that I wanted them to be. Cleanup work. How much work does it take to get that board smooth and flat after you've resawed it? Well, bandsaw blades don't really make the cleanest cuts. Definitely not compared to a table saw blade. Bandsaw blades can leave saw marks. And if you do have that little bit of blade drift, you got to deal with that too. So that means more work at the planer or the sander to get that thing smooth than what I have to do with the table saw. Now with the table saw, I do have that little bit of sliver right in the middle that I don't cut away and I have to plane or sand that away. But that's not really a big deal because the rest of the board's smooth. Safety. Okay, there is no doubt in my mind that resawing on a bandsaw is infinitely safer 
than doing it at the table saw. Absolutely. With the table saw, I do risk that I could have some sort of kickback and that's not really a thing when it comes to a bandsaw. Now, to play devil's advocate though, it does take about 27 years for my bandsaw blade to stop spinning after I turn the saw off. And there's been a few times where I almost did something and kind of came close to a blade because I thought it was turned off when it wasn't because it just spins and spins and spins. So I can't act like the bandsaw is completely 100% safe in doing this operation. But there is one safety concern that I have that maybe it doesn't impact you, but it definitely impacts me. And that's not necessarily blade drift, but it's brain drift. When I'm resawing a long board of the bandsaw and it can take several minutes to get through, I just find myself drifting off and thinking about something completely different, which means I'm not concentrating on the cut itself. Now, I know this is a personal thing that maybe I experience that you don't, but knowing that I experience it, I have to pay attention to that. And well, frankly, if I'm not looking at the saw and I'm not looking at the blade, I'm not looking at my workpiece and I'm thinking about something else, I'm more likely to get hurt. So I'd prefer to stay away from that. Dust collection. Dust collection on a bandsaw is awful. I mean, it's not like miter saw awful, but it's pretty awful, especially compared to a table saw, not even in the same ballpark. Material waste. That's probably the most common rebuttal that I hear from people with comments or emails is whenever I resaw on the table saw, I'm wasting more material. The saw blade itself is wider, has a wider curve. That means you're getting more sawdust and less well, wood on the board compared to a bandsaw blade that's a lot thinner. I'm dealing with a situation where every little fraction counts and I have to save as much material as possible. I might use the bandsaw, but I probably still wouldn't. And that's because of blade drift and the cleanup work and all the other things that I already mentioned a little bit earlier. A full curved table saw blade is about an eighth of an inch. Now, bandsaw blades about a 32nd of an inch. So there's a big difference. I totally concede that. But there are a few things that help to mitigate that. So there's not really that big of a difference between the two. One of the tricks is that I often use a circular saw blade in my table saw. So circular saw blade is about a 16th of an inch, not an eighth of an inch. So now we've already greatly reduced that difference. The curve difference between my circular saw blade and my bandsaw blade is only 1 32nd of an inch. So factor in even the slightest bit of drift and just a little bit of saw marks, add in that cleanup work and you're not looking at a huge difference. So I know that the bandsaw blade could save you a little bit of material, I will grant you that, but I don't think it's as much as some people out there like to claim. It's pretty common for people to pause one of my videos, go down, leave a comment without actually watching the whole video through. And well, one of the things that I expect to see, because I've seen it in the past is, well, the problem is you're not using the right blade. If you're using the Laguna Resaw King blade, all the things you talked about actually are completely eliminated. You mean like this? Yep, I got a Laguna Resaw blade. I've had it for a while and it's a good blade. I totally get why people talk about these blades. It is really good for doing resaw work. I can also tell you that I should rather use a table saw. While this one provides you a much better cut than a lot of other bandsaw blades, it still has some cleanup work to do. Now there are some folks out there that claim they get super glossy cuts with not a single blade mark in them whatsoever and no blade drift. And sometimes those claims get a little bit over the top. Let's just say it's a good blade. It does help with all those things, but it doesn't 100% mitigate any of the cons I put on my list. So I would still rather use my table saw blade. I listed a whole bunch of pros and cons for why I do it the way I do it. But there is one major thing that I left out and is probably the most important one, which is what process do you enjoy the most? Because this is woodworking. We're supposed to be having fun, right? And well, you are absolutely resawing your boards the wrong way. If you're doing it one way, you've never tried a different way. You don't like the way you do it, but you always do it because everyone tells you you have to. Well, try a different way. Have some fun. That's what this is all about. And to meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.